This is Wraith from Wraith Rain. I'm an author of serialized gay romance fiction. Every week on this podcast, I'll be reading a chapter from one of my gay fantasy shifter serials called Dragon's Rain. I'll explain at the break how you can find out more about this story and others I write. So let's get to it. Chapter 139 Forever. Everyone was dancing. Wherever Caden looked, people were swaying, jumping, twisting, and swirling. He saw that they all wore some piece of clothing that was either black or white or both. People's eyelids or cheeks were smeared with silvery glitter that resembled Iolaire's shimmery scales, while others wore glittering black lipstick that was the match of Raziel's armor. Drinks were pressed into their hands cold cans of beer or wine or champagne. Glassware would have been a nightmare down here and dangerous for the humans, but the drinks were good and thirst-quenching. The ambrosia from his first drink still fizzed in Caden's blood, heightening the effects of the alcohol in every drink. He felt buzzed but not drunk, dancing on the edge of a cliff about to fly and not fall. Rose was leading him deeper into the blow. She looked back at him over her shoulder and grinned. He found himself grinning back so hard that his face hurt from it. He expected her to be leading him to some spot where Marban's throne had been dragged out and propped up just to annoy Valerius a little bit. But instead, she took him to the spot where they had met. He was surprised she recognized it because he had been so anxious when she'd come up to him and told him to follow her if he wanted to make it out of the below again. People immediately cleared a way around them. A spotlight illuminated them causing Caden to blink and slowly bring a hand up to shield his eyes. The music lowered and the crowd quieted as if expecting this. Caden lowered his hand slowly as his eyes adjusted to the brightness and looked into the equal brightness of Rose's face. Someone handed her a microphone and she said, Testing, one, two, three. Her voice echoed around the cavern. We actually got this thing working the first time. Good show, guys. Rose laughed and waved at some of Marban's people who gave awkwards, You're welcome, Rose, back. She then focused on Caden. I figured we'd get the music, dancing, booze, and food just right. But not even Marban has his speeches go off without a hitch. There were grins and guffaws from around the crowd. Rose took Caden's right hand. But you've always managed to turn what we expect into the unexpected Caden. People roared with agreement. They stomped their feet and thrust hands with drinks into the air. Caden ducked his head, smiling shyly. We always work hard and party harder in the below because we never know if there's going to be another chance, another sunrise, another tomorrow, or even if we get those, another opportunity for us to have something good, Rose explained. Caden's smile went pained, even as there were murmured agreement from the crowd. That's why we focus on today and not tomorrow, a young man shouted, and there was laughter and nods. Rose nodded too, before she added, But since you came to us, those tomorrows have seemed a little sure, like a light on the horizon, the coming of the dawn and a brand new beautiful day. Caden felt his throat tighten and tears forming in his eyes again. Really, everyone was saying such amazing things. He hadn't done that much. They all had done it. They had all helped him, especially Rose. To be honest, these days I'm excited about tomorrow, Rose said as she lifted a drink with her other hand, because I can finally believe that it could be better than today, that there is hope that the dawn will bring with it something wonderful. And I don't think I'm alone. To the white dragon king, Caden, the people's dragon. To the White Dragon King Caden, the toast echoed from one end of the cavern to the other. To the White Dragon King Caden, the people's dragon. Caden lifted his own drink first to Rose, to friendship, to hope, to all of you. There were shouts of acceptance and happiness. They toasted him again, and he toasted all of them. Rose somehow got rid of the microphone, and they hugged tightly. I'm so glad I met you, Caden told her breathing it into her ear. Me too, she answered back with a tightening of her arms around him. I love you, Rose. I love you too, dragon boy. She pulled back and kissed his cheeks, 
Now, let's get this party started. The people filled in around them. The music pumped up to ear-shattering levels. Caden could feel the bass through the ground into his boots and up his legs. His chest vibrated with the beat. He was dancing as much with Rose as with all the people around them. Wally and Landry were at his sides, with Wally doing a strange butt-waggle dance that actually caught on. Soon Wally was leading a conga line throughout the blow that Caden was fully a part of. It led him back to the gash. That was when he saw Valerius. The Black Dragon King had stopped and was kneeling down by a small, roped-off area where there were cut flowers and votive candles. They were the people who had died that day he and Caden had met. Caden broke off from the conga line and joined him. Valerius. Caden reached for the Black Dragon King's shoulder, just as Valerius was turning back for his hand. Their fingers linked as Valerius gently adjusted one of the votive candles so that it stood straight and made sure the flowers were situated fully in their vases. Scholarships and the names of each of those lost had been created. A statue and plaque would commemorate them too. Valerius rose up and framed Caden's face with his large hands. Seeing you here right away has stopped Rosiel from ripping Mephis' wings off, Valerius told him, even with all the dancing. Caden saw the green dragon king grinning over Valerius's left shoulder. He doesn't look repentant. In fact, he's making dancing motions. Of course he is, Valerius tossed his head. Is being in a conga line considered dancing? Caden asked all innocents. Conga. Kid, bring Grumpy Dragon and pick up the pace, Wally cried as he had doubled back around, snaking towards them with the conga line. Grumpy? Brownie faced Valerius is back, Landry called from her spot behind Wally, her hands on his shaking hips and dozens of people after her. Frowny? Come on, my frowny grumpy dragon. We're getting in a conga line. Caden grinned. Oh no, I. But Caden had no fear as he pulled Valerius after him like a kite. The conga line opened to allow them to join. Soon every dragon shifter was in the line. Esme was especially enjoying herself flirting with a young man who looked very keen on touching her backside. May simply narrowed her eyes just once at the man who tried to slip his hands from her waist, and he nearly melted into a puddle. His hands did not move again, however. Kayla was the very end of the conga line, calling herself the wild tail as she swept the line through the crowd, picking up more and more people while dumping others. The calls of wee echoed even over the music. The conga line finally led them to a raised dais where the throne that Caden had thought would be there was. It was set out with something just as large covered beside it. Valerius frowned, but then smoothed his face into a neutral expression quickly. Marban was sitting on the throne with a cigar in his hand. The crowd opened to allow Caden and Valerius to approach. The old swarm shifter had a small smile on his lips. He's pushing it with this, Valerius sighed. Just let him have his moment, Caden said. He's been great with everything else. He has. That's why this is surprising, Valerius admitted. They stepped up on the dais in front of Marban, who was still smiling at them and wreathed in cigar smoke. The music abruptly cut off, and everyone was silent. Caden blinked and looked around a little. He couldn't read what was happening here from anyone's expression. What's going on, Valerius? Caden asked. I don't know, Valerius admitted. It was a touch of hurt. Things seem to be going so well between us. I agree. Let's not jump to conclusions here, then, Caden said, but he held onto Valerius's nearest hand tighter. The other dragon shifters appeared just behind them below the dais. No one was saying anything, but Caden knew that they were ready to come to his and Valerius's aid, even if the only danger was to their character. Rose, Wally, and Landry were there, too, He couldn't read on their faces what they thought of this either, but they were prepared for anything. I used to say there were two kings of reach, Marban said. His voice soft yet caring, he stroked the armrests of the thrones that so mirrored Valerius above. I meant, of course, Valerius and myself. Marban touched his chest and let out a long swirl of smoke. No one said anything. Caden swallowed hard. Valerius and Marben were friends. More than that, surely Marben wouldn't be betraying Valerius and him both now. Because back then, I thought of myself as King Valerius's foil. 
the shadow king to his proclaimed one. But now I recognize that King Valerius had power he didn't want, and I wanted power that I didn't have, Marban said quietly. Caden blinked. The tightness in his chest eased. The crowd were listening intently. Caden was sure that there were many there that thought of Marban as their leader and Valerius and Caden, someone else's. Marban's trying to fix that, Caden realized. Yes, he is, Valerius agreed, having read Caden's earlier thought. Valerius' expression was almost sad. All the tension was drained from him, as it was from the other dragon shifters. Before tonight, before their fight together with the behemoth, they wouldn't have had Valerius's back, but now they did. I felt small, forgotten, and unseen, Marban admitted with a wry smile. But then, a certain white dragon crash-landed in the below. He sought safety here, as so many others have before him. Caden smiled. He saw the grins all around. Rose shook her head as she laughed. And he changed everything, Marban continued. Valerius looked down into Caden's face and gave him a tender look. You did change everything, my beloved, Valerius sent. Funny, but it felt like it was meant all along, Caden replied. But he actually made that idea of there being two kings of reach true. Marban said as he stood up from the throne. He went over to the shrouded object next to the throne and pulled off the material, revealing what was beneath. It was a matching throne. King Valerius and King Caden are my kings. They are your kings. They are our kings. Valerius gestured for the two of them to take their seats on the thrones. People clapped and cried for them to sit, sit, sit. The two of them walked up to the thrones. Do we sit or, oh, you have a speech planned, Caden laughed. Not planned, not a speech. A few words, just a few, Valerius said with an arch brow. A speech. Valerius and Caden then turned and faced the crowd, but didn't sit. The crowd quieted as they waited to hear what he had to say. Know this, Valerius said with quiet conviction, that Caden and I shall earn these thrones Every single day. And our friends and our counselors, he gestured to Marban, Shioni, Wally, and Rose, will ensure that no one feels small, unseen, or forgotten who needs us again. Valerius and Caden took their seats to deafening applause. They linked hands and smiled at their people, even as their souls and dragon spirits twined together as one. Hi guys, it's Wraith, author and narrator of the gay dragon shifter fiction podcast, Dragon's Reign. This story ends at 140 chapters, which means that the last episode is coming very soon. But don't worry, I am turning another of my serial stories into the next season of this podcast. And the best way to find out what it will be is to subscribe to my YouTube channel. After the last Dragon's Reign episode, watch for the post-story live stream, beautiful new artwork, and trailers for the new story, and maybe even some behind-the-scenes content. I am sad to let Dragon's Reign go, but very excited to bring you the next chapter, so to speak, of paranormal gay romance. <laughs>